Well, you might think being a backpacker is reserved for someone in their 20s, but it's now the latest travel trend for those who want to explore the world on a budget in their midlife and beyond. Evie Farrell and her six-year-old daughter, Emmy, left their Sydney life behind in search of just that, embarking on a journey which had them living in hostels, sleeping on buses and exploring <laughs> Southeast Asia. Now she organises her own trips, taking mothers and families along for the ride. What a plan, hey? <laughs> Evie Farrell joins us now. Good morning to you. Yeah, it seems like something that's for the 20s. I know a lot of my girlfriends did this, but you're saying no. No, absolutely. Well, I did it in my 20s yep. and it was an entirely different experience <laughs> than what I do now. You know, yeah. now when you look at hostels, for example, we think that they're going to be really um, dirty, um, awful little places to stay. But now hostels are absolutely beautiful. You can book a private family room with an ensuite. Oh. Often there's swimming pools, there's bars, there's restaurants. So it's really easy to travel cheap and to do it well. And also, parents are trying to kind of leave their kids behind, but it looks like your experience with Emmy was just a phenomenal thing. Take us through the highlight. What, what did you love doing? For me, it was just having that uninterrupted time with my daughter. And I think that's something that it's really hard to get, especially at home these days when we're so busy. We, we have so many responsibilities, so many bills. We're always rushing around. We have this mental list. You can never truly focus. And for me to be able to be away and, and just get rid of all of that and have the freedom to spend every minute with her mm. is something that money can't buy. You know, it's just, it's just the most amazing experience that you can have with your family. Mm. Now, money can buy a lot or sometimes not much when you're away. How do you avoid paying a lot for experiences? Yeah, well, definitely um, staying in hostels. It's very easy to live to live cheaply. And one of the great things about it is if you're buying local food, if you're staying with local families and local guest houses, using local transport, the money that you're paying, well, cheap for us, goes to families and local communities. And one of the things that I love doing is renting the lifestyle. So, for example, the Shangri-La in Chiang Mai is $500 a night to stay at this beautiful luxury five-star resort but you can pay $30 for a family of four to go and stay there for a day, lie by the pool, use the facilities, kids can go down the water ah. slides, and you have your whole day of luxury, but you're only paying a tiny, tiny amount for wow. it. Wow. Yes. The whole can... day. Yes. Stop it. I wow. know. And, Love that. And often you just go back to the hotel to sleep anyway, yeah. right? So exactly. as long as you've got a nice comfy bed, you find the cheapest one possible. What about yeah. food though? Mm. Because that becomes an issue, especially when you're looking for convenience or you don't know where to look. Yeah, well look, in Asia, you can find street food really easily, very cheap, very good. Places like Vietnam have some of the freshest food I've ever eaten. It's absolutely delicious. And if you're a family and you have fussy kids, you can always get rice, plain chicken, plain meals just to satisfy them. And mm. I think, you know, sometimes we forget that, that everywhere, every country has kids, every country has families, so there's going to be something for your kids to eat or do or, or be looked after. Mm. Um, there's always, you know, health facilities, there's always community groups that you can talk to and seek assistance if you need to. So it's not really that difficult and you can do it really cheap. Evie Farrell, you are a genius. Nailed Thank it. you. We're going to have you back. See you. Mm. <laughs>